Welcome to Paranormal Heart, a place where people can talk about their paranormal experiences. With your host, Cat Ward. Welcome, folks, to Paranormal Heart Podcast. It's your girl, Cat, again. I have another great episode for you tonight. I'm joined by fellow Canadians out of British Columbia, Mike, Christy, and Phil from the Unknown Paranormal. I always love each of my guests, no matter where they're from, but it's always a treat for me when I can chat with other Canadians. Mike and his team share some paranormal experiences they've had, what their favorite pieces of equipment are, as well as what locations they each favor investigating including the unsolved death of Janet Smith. If you'd like to share your encounters on the show, I'd love to have you on. You can send me an audio recording of your encounter, you can write it down for me to narrate, or we can record our conversation together, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you have questions, comments, or just want to say hello, drop me an email at paranormalheart13 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoy the show, please like Share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Tell your friends, don't keep it to yourself. Tell the world about Paranormal Heart Podcast. You can tell them that new episodes are released on the second and last Sunday of each month at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find me on YouTube, Podbean, KPNL Digital Network on Thursday nights, and any place you find fine podcasts. Now, on with the show. Hey guys, welcome to Paranormal Heart. Hey, hey. Hey, thanks for having us. Thanks so we much. Appreciate it. I'm really happy that you're here. Like I said before, we uh, were recording. And then in our past correspondence, that uh, most of my guests are Americans. Um, not that I don't like Americans, <laughs> but it's just, it's, <laughs> it's special for me to have fellow Canadians. So thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. So I thought we could start off with uh, introducing yourselves and your team name, and then we can take it from there. Uh, My name is Phil. I'm an investigator and kind of like the tech guy. I edit a lot of the videos. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I'm Christy. I guess I'm like the team coordinator. I also do investigating as well. I'm Mike, lead investigator in the team that we all take part in. And uh, go out there and explore as we are the unknown paranormal. Awesome. And you're out of British Columbia. Vancouver, British Columbia. Vancouver. Okay. And we do have a mutual friend, hence how I got in touch with you, or you got in touch with me. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. You beat me to it. (laughs) So let's. We're we're that unknown. (laughs) What's that? Say again. Say again. Trust that. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't even hear what you said. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> well, I'll have it recorded so I can just go back. <laughs> You're like, I'll, I'll view that later. I'll yeah. edit that later. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll edit it. <laughs> so, so I thought we could start off with how you got into investigating and what made you form the team and uh, whoever wants to go first. Well, we are a family team. So that kind of helps, um, you know, husband, brother. Okay. Um, yeah, we've all had, you know, experiences growing up. Um, and we've always been into this. So it's just nice that we all kind of clicked in this kind of field. And we were able to say, you know, sit down and say, let's create this team. Let's see where and how we can go with this. And so far, it's been amazing. So are you all originally from Vancouver? Yes. Okay. Yes. Lots of activity there, I would imagine. Um, we do, but the locations are hard um, yeah. to get into, which makes it tough. Yeah. With, with Vancouver, like <clears throat> Vancouver has a lot of its own history with, with fires, pioneers, and all that kind of stuff. It's um, location, location grabbing is, is the hardest out here. 
Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of it, uh, we said in previous podcasts, is uh, there's a lot of paratourism is what we call it. Oh, yeah. Um, So so that we reach out to, um, you know, buildings or museums Mm -hmm. or certain areas. Uh, They always find it, I guess, intriguing for themselves to throw you a really high quote. Um, You know, and we're talking one location wanted $11,000. No way. one hour. Yeah, and that was just for, you know. That's was that even a ridiculous. Yeah, one room. And yeah. that was for, like, one room. It was uh, a mansion. Holy hell. <laughs> yeah. That's not it, it, right. It, it makes it really tough, um, you know, but we're, we're pretty good. Um, we've, we've built a really good rapport with the city of uh, New Westminster. Yep. Uh, we're slowly getting our foot into the door with the city of Burnaby right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we keep repetitive on locations that we're used to, where we find that we're we're gaining the activity, the trust of the spirits. Um, we like to return, whether it's on a monthly basis, a weekly basis. Um, right now, the team is doing really well. We're working on a on a on a case. It's one of Vancouver's unsolved murders uh, oh. from 1922, and her name is Janet Smith. And uh, we've gone there to investigate to see where we can line up um, with false information or true information and see what the paranormal can bring in helps on this case. We find that really intriguing for us. Now, do you also do uh, uh, private residences or do you strictly stay with um, like museums and and whatnot? We offer um, home investigations. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, we, we've had a few calls. We, we've gone and taken care of and helped the people. Um, but those those come and go as, as quick as they can, right? Yep. Here, we kind of find that people are very interested. They reach out and say, hey, you know, this is happening or this is <clears throat> what's going on. And then, okay, well, give us a time. We can come down. And then they're like, oh, well, actually, forget it. I think it's just me. I'm losing my mind. So, you can't really push with that either. No, like, you oh, no. can't. So, and it, it, those it, are all- it kind of bothers me when people do that because if it's something that's, they reached out to you in the first place, so it's obviously they want help. And for them to all of a sudden say, no, um, I, I think I'm just crazy. Well, no, let's find out for sure to give you peace of mind. Yeah, that's right. And, and the thing is also, too, is um, like most teams, I would say, I would hope, um, most of them, if not all of them, we're, we're a nonprofit organization. Yep. So like, you, you know, all our equipment, our gas, you know, we, we take care of that ourselves. So mm-hmm. we do this because we have passion for it and we want answers. And of course, it is a bummer when we feel like we've wasted our time, but it is what it is. You just got to keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah, my ch- we don't charge either. We'll just say, you know, maybe a cup of coffee, you know. <laughs> Sometimes they have snacks for us, but... <laughs> yeah. we, we don't That's expect always- it. We just want to go and help them. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing this? This will be our third. Uh, well, going into three, but we've advertised it for about two years now on okay. social media. Mm-hmm. So we've done it before social media, and then we're like, well, let's try the Instagram and YouTube thing. And yep. that's when it kind of really blew off, I guess. <laughs> So did any of you or, or all of you ever have uh, experiences as children? And that's pretty much what got your interest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all three of us have had our own fair share. Can you tell um, us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so me personally, growing up, uh, I lost my grandfather um, uh, to cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to uh, hear that. So it's, it's no problem. Um Being said, I I spent about a week, two weeks, uh, I lived with my grandma just to help her uh, get back on her feet, help her around the house, just Mm -hmm. just like a regular grandchild, right? Yep. Uh, So I had my own designated room, and she had hers, and my my grandmother was a very religious lady. Uh, So before bed, and it doesn't matter how old you are, she wanted you to do a prayer. Um, So out of habit, I sat in my bed did a prayer, said, said goodnight to my grandmother and tucked myself in. She went to her bedroom. While I'm laying in bed, I can hear my grandmother from a distance. And uh, she really enjoyed doing the rosary. 
Um, so while she was doing that, I just so happened under my breath to say, good night, Grandpa. Um, closed my eyes, went to bed. And I was suddenly woken up to the feeling of somebody who placed their hand on my head and kind of stroked down to the center of my back, um, which I believe it was my, my grandfather letting me know that he heard me saying good night one more time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't end there. Uh, a couple of days later, grandma was up. Uh, she was she was baking for, for Easter. And what happened was is she actually locked a pan in her self-cleaning oven. Oh. So her house at the time started to fill up with smoke and the alarms are going off. Now, even though I can smell the smoke and hear the alarm, I couldn't physically wake up to get out of bed. So I'm laying there and it truly felt like it was the old school bed where you still had the foot with the high pillars on the side of the yep. footrest. Mm-hmm. So it felt like someone grabbed each end of that and shook my bed uh, to try to get my attention to wake up. Mm-hmm. So once that happened, I got up, went to my grandma's aid, and that was done. Uh, but that's just one or two experiences that I've had um, growing up. How old were you at the time? I must have been, I'm going to say about maybe 13, 14 years old. Okay. Yeah. How did you feel at the time? Was it something that freaked you out or you were pretty calm? I was pretty calm. I've always had kind of the wonder in my head about what happens after death. Yep. So growing up with a you know Portuguese and Italian background, um, I grew up going to what's called catechism out here. And that's, uh, you know, Monday to Friday school class type thing <clears throat> uh, since kindergarten. And I was always directed in the way that... You know, this is what's going to happen. This is what you got to do. But no one physically wanted to tell you what if you didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I always felt myself being intrigued into the opposite of what someone tells me. Yeah. Right. I I, want to go. I kind of want to go through the path. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, growing up, it's always been it all started with watching, uh, you know, taps on TV and all the popular shows at the time Mm -hmm. and, and wondering to myself is, is this really true? Uh, and then, you know, the family got together and like Christy said, you know, with what we were doing just in spare time, finding ourselves driving through a cemetery with no real reason, um, to us having personal experiences and what we've done to, to do it or how to chase it, to see if it happened again, it only made sense that we came together and tried to form this team. Right. So, yeah, I think we've been very strong with that, and that's a little bit about me. Nice. Christy, what about you? Well, I mean, I've had lots of experiences growing up. Um, Our mom used to watch all those ghost shows as well, so she's a firm believer, and we grew up on that stuff as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Like I said, I've had many. You know, we've had shadow people in our home to things touching me or Seeing things, whether you're dreaming, well, you think you're dreaming because you're seven, eight years old, Mm -hmm. talking to absolutely nothing. Um, Like, I could tell you hundreds of stories, to be quite honest. Um, Me and him, when we first got together, we were moving out of our, I guess, first apartment together. And just two weeks before we were moving out, you know, you got all your stuff packed up and we were sleeping in the living room because our bedroom's packed up. And a shadow man was standing away from me. And, you know, you kind of rub your eyes like, okay, you're delusional. Go back to bed. He wakes up and sees it literally standing over me. And prior to that, I was seeing him in my bedroom door. And Phil's also been in that house where he's seen it or heard it in the spare room. So, I mean. That that entire hallway was, it just felt bad. Yeah, it, it was not good. Um, it's one of the lost records that we have, too, because I remember the time, I think your brother spent the night to help us move, and Phil decided it was good to stay up late and just take pictures of the empty house. Mm-hmm. And what I believe, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, he caught a, a photo at that time of uh, of an orb at the front of the bedroom, and then 
when you zoom zoom in to look at it, there he, what we witnessed was almost a side profile of the face. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, but that's you know we're talking maybe eleven, twelve years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's a piece of evidence that's lost and forgotten, but we always got it in the back of our heads. Now this shadow man was it uh, similar to the hat man, or is it just uh, yeah. okay? Wow. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, it was a very scary feeling to be quite honest. It almost like when you first wake up, you're in like that sleep paralyzation yep. stage. Can't move. You're seeing it. And that's what you think at first, right? You're just in that state. But then when he witnessed it, it was like, well, I'm not going crazy. So that's kind of a relief off you. And then you're like, oh, what do you do now? Well, yeah. <laughs> it, right. Yeah. So it, that's happened to you. And our new home. We've had some help from friends figure that out. And um, yeah, like I said, there's many occasions where cupboards will open at a friend's house and you go downstairs, we're home alone, just me and her and no one's there. You go pick up the phone because you're young. The first time you get to stay home alone by yourself, mm-hmm. you're excited. Yep. And it was back when, you know, the phones you pick up and if someone's on the other line, it would beep. Okay. Because you have two phones. Yep. It was beeping. So we're like, what's going on? We go downstairs. You can see that something's on a phone. And the, at the time, they had an old school rocking chair that was rocking. We've never been more scared in our lives. I think we were like 10 at the time. We <laughs> ran out of that house. Cops were called. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a bad situation. <laughs> you know, since those keep happening and we keep witnessing it it just gets me more intrigued and now that i'm older and understand it right yeah instead of running out and calling 911 it's, yeah <laughs> let me pull out a phone let me see yeah as, a, as a kid you don't get that you either are terrified or 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 you think it's normal like oh okay we just need a show, yeah. right and we're lucky because our like i said our mom believed in yeah. that stuff so you could go to her and be like you know there's a ghost in my bedroom and she'd be like well, maybe it's your guardian angel, you know, like yeah. obviously as a six year old, she's not going to be like, oh, it's the boogeyman. <laughs> right. So, like most parents. Yeah. That, have that support as well from your mom, of course. <clears throat> yeah. How about you, Phil? Yeah. Um, I think like Christy, you know, uh, same kind of thing. You know, we grew up watching all the movies and stuff. Um, for me, though, I think one of the uh, the oddest things was um um, at, at first I thought, um, Christy was actually pranking me, um, <laughs> uh, you know, being kids and everything. But, um, I remember one night I was trying to go to sleep. It was restless. I was probably eight or seven, you know, the house with the dump truck. Mm-hmm. It was uh, a two bedroom basement suite. And I felt something like grab my ankles. I'm like, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, I know you're there, Christy, whatever, like stop playing with me, whatever. Right. It must've been really late at night. I, I don't know. It was so long ago. Out of nowhere, the, 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 the blanket is ripped off of me. I, I jump up and I scream bloody murder. She's <laughs> not there. And in my peripherals, I see what looks like a shadow just rip out of the room as I'm screaming bloody murder. And she's passed out in her bedroom, obviously. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of the craziest things for me as a kid. Um, but like Christy, you know, just little things where you're like, you know, it's not normal, but it's like, you don't say anything. You're like, oh, that was creepy. Like, yep. <laughs> like who's going to believe you, you know, when you're, when you're that young, you yeah, know, exactly. like, do any of you uh, have any, any gifts like, um, psychic abilities or. <laughs> <laughs> I think Christy in some way is, uh, I think, they're they're attracted to her even on investigations they seem to quite often um lean toward her and be very into her and that has always happened as i said even being young i've been able to have dreams and i find with me it's more of a dream aspect so i feel like i'm dreaming but you're in that state where you're sleeping but you're awake Ah, I don't know what there has been things that that that's happened where she would have a dream and maybe a week later. I don't know if she wants me to tell this, but I'm going to say it anyway. uh, Like a week later, it's kind of like deja vu. I -hmm. think you would describe it, but you've been in that that exact moment Mm -hmm. and like or, or whatever. Like she'll have dreams about things that that's going to happen. I don't know how often that's her story, but um it's it's quite interesting stuff 
Um, I've had other um, friends with gifts actually approach me and try to teach me because I'm trying to figure it out myself because before it's kind of like, like I said before, you're crazy. I don't know how to do it. I, you know, you don't look into that. Oh, I didn't look into that. So um, I'm learning more about mm -hmm. it. And like he says, there is oftentimes I have dreams and I'll draw it out. And I'll tell Mike, we need to go here. And I don't know why, but we need to be here right now. And, and often she won't even know where it is. And then for whatever reason, we just happen to go somewhere. And she'll be like, that that's the spot. We have to stop right there and, and talk to dead people. That's the spot. And it will be literally <laughs> an identical drawing. And and we've never even been there before. It's it's. And oftentimes bonkers. I won't show them it until I know myself. It's yep. actually a spot because... You show them and they're like, okay, well, you're drawing. Nice. <laughs> so, um, we also have a, I'd like to say a spiritual connection to a teddy bear we bought in. Mm -hmm. And I've learned quite a bit about him through physically seeing him recently. Um, my daughter has seen him too. So in a way you're kind of relieved that you're not just witnessing spirits pop up. Yeah. Um, and he's also actually told me a story almost like pages of you're flipping through a book and I was able to capture little pieces of it and actually research about it to find out it was a true incident of what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, we've investigated him and he's come up with everything we've asked him. Um, the answers that actually appeared in my head, I guess. So, you know, seeing that it makes me eager to learn more or learn how to control it and, figure out how I can go about it. Does that run in the family? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> not, that um, I, not that anyone ever mentioned it before. No one's ever mentioned it. Uh, yeah. It seems like, like Christy and I have been together nine <laughs> years, and even though there's been... Um, there, there's been little bits of... of, of tweaking throughout the relationship where she's picking up on certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but it hasn't really been this strong until we've had possession of our bear. Um, yes, I believe he has a very strong connection with Christy. And this is kind of what's popping it off to be at its fullest, where she's at the point where uh, there's people now willing to help her learn about the ability, how to turn it on, how to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Um, so for us, it's still, still newish. And at the same time, I think, um, I think we're enjoying what's happening, right? It's really cool, but kind of scary at the same time. Yeah, it is. Especially when you don't have someone to help you hone in on it from, you know, from such a young age. Well, yeah. And, uh, yeah, exactly. And having the support and figuring out how to actually control it and kind of turn it off helps because for a while I wasn't sleeping for a uh, solid two months because of all this. Oh, wow. Was crazy. It was just coming. I'd wake up, I'd wake up in fear. And then I'd be like, I got to research this now because this is what my dreams said. You know, so I just chose not to go to sleep because it was the only time I was able to actually be in my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Where did you get the teddy bear? It's funny as that is we actually got him from a, uh, an antique store. And we went there a couple times. And every time I'd walk into this room, I would get a splitting headache just in my temple. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is weird because I didn't walk in with this headache. And we'd walk around. It would go away until I reached this section. And uh, lately, he gets almost like a head chill if there's something around. So we've been trying to open up our senses as well, right? Mm -hmm. So he's been able to do that. And I approached him and said, can you please go in this room and tell me what you feel? Because I picked up this bear and I was like, this is, this is the one that's causing my head because it got more pain. So I put it back and I wanted to see if someone else would pick it up. Yeah. He walked in, he picked it up. He's like, there's something with this bear. And I was like, I knew it. Yeah. So we put him back and we sat and we, you know, should we get him? Should we not? And it was about a month. I was like, we oh, got wow. to go get him. Yeah. I was like, we need him. Like, I was going crazy. I was like, I want this bear. Yeah. He needs to come home. Something about him. He wants us to have him. We went back. We bought him and 
he's been with us ever since, and it's. Yeah, I think we awesome. should tell the story about uh, Bert. Yeah, if she wants to hear. Yeah, of course. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, what he has told me and what we've investigated and learned is he is actually, he's from England. Um, 1883 is when an incident happened. It's called the Victoria Hall incident, accident. So it was a toy drive for children um, that unfortunately ended horribly. 160 children actually passed away due to a stampede. Oh, man. Yeah. Very sad. Um, And so when I seen that, we started investigating, asking him questions. Always the number 10 would come up. So we finally asked, are you 10? We believe he's a 10-year-old little boy that unfortunately passed due to this incident. So he's told us 1883. He's told us the amount of children that passed. Um, You know, you get little moments out of him. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to push it. He is a kid, right? So we will take what we get. But that's so far what we've kind of learned, like just a rundown. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because, you know, purchasing this bear and as, you know, paranormal investigators, you're trying to start from the basic. You know, can you prove if there's something attached to this? Mm -hmm. And it was almost, you know, on a weekly thing, we'd sit down we'd talk with them and we were getting evidence. And it wasn't until Christy started getting these these dreamlike visions uh, mm-hmm. through that book she was explaining, mm-hmm. where we decided as a team is, let, let's sit down, let's discuss what we've picked up. And what we've done is we created about uh, 15 to 16 questionnaire, yes and no, and answers that we felt that he can answer based on the dream. So we took Burke, uh, we went down to the local cemetery just to be you know, in the quiet mm-hmm. uh, amongst the rest of them. We sat him down, we, we set up, and Christy had a one-on-one, about a 30-minute conversation where 11 out of the 15 questions were answered through Burke with intelligent responses to everything that we have asked. Um, the one thing that he is being very stubborn about is actually telling us his name. Okay. Um, but other than that, so Burke is the name that Christy has chosen mm-hmm. uh, for him as the bear. Uh, but to learn on actually his personal given name is something that we've yet to, to, to bring out of him. Mm-hmm. Um, he has said a couple names, or I've heard a couple names, I should say. But when you say, hey, is this your name? It's quiet. And he'll <clears throat> reply with Burke. So it's almost like he likes that name I chosen for him. Yeah. Um, so right now he's just Burke until we can hopefully find out what his name is. Maybe he's not happy with his name and he yeah, just wants to go through maybe. the identity. So how are you getting the responses from him? Is Are you picking up on them, Christy? I can pick up sometimes. It depends on what location. We've used uh, just equipment mainly. Mm-hmm. Spirit box. Spirit box. Um, and it's always the same voice that comes up through it mm-hmm. whenever we talk to him. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, We were talking about that the other day. Whenever we bring Burke on an investigation, and there's even been been times, and this is opening an entire new door, but there there was even a time we went down to um, the BC Pen here in the U.S., and I don't know if spirits can travel. Like, we don't know these things, but... I believe he was even with us on an investigation um, that later we found out was dangerous, almost as if he was protecting us in a sense. I won't go too much in, into that, um, but it's almost like like they can travel somehow. Um, but it's always the same voice, his voice, when he comes through on the spirit box. And like Christy said, we can use other equipment. Like we'll, we'll do the yes or, or, or no game with... Uh, you know, spirit balls and, and whatnot. But the most fascinating thing is it's always literally the same voice, the same boy's voice. It's really crazy. And it's, it's even crazier than nuts. But even when we went to a location, we brought him, it was a scary location. He didn't like it. I felt a child grab my leg. I knew he was there. Um, and that's when I heard him. And even in my head, <laughs> 
it is the same voice that comes up through our equipment. Yeah. So I, I do believe it, he's he, very intelligent. Like it's almost like that particular day in the location we were. It's it's almost like he was protecting us in a way. And then we even we we when we go on investigations, we we film everything mm -hmm. um, on most investigations, and we've been able to 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 pick up a lot of evidence. We'll spend sometimes hours and hours and hours on end going through evidence, uh, you know, listening and and looking, and um, uh, even on some of our videos. If you go back on our videos uh, in regards to Burke, same voice. Like, it's just really fascinating stuff. That's amazing. Now, do, have you ever had a, any feelings that it's not a child and it's something demonic? Or do you, like, you have no bad feelings at all? Absolutely no bad feelings. Um... As strange as it is, <laughs> is looking at the teddy bear itself. So, he hugs you. Yeah, whoever designed <laughs> and built this bear, it, it's it's pretty much an 1800s bear, if you know what that looks like. Um, so that's what that is with a little jumpsuit and he's got a little bow. Um, but there's been times where, you know, going on investigations and, you know, just regular people walking trails or whatnot will stop and, and, and speak to us. And they'll, they'll look at the bear. And think and, it was a child. And they like did, a, a yeah, like they want to hold them. Wow. Yeah, and as soon as they, they hold them, uh, about 90% of, of the time, a lot of people agree with, I'm holding a child right now. Um, so, he, you know, there, there's times that he's shy. There's times that he's really active. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I've taken this bear to a straight up, you know, a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? A, step, a skeptic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're like, well, I don't believe, I don't believe. And then they hold it and they're like, I understand what you're saying now. Their, their tone of voice changes, their 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 posture. It's uh, like you know. relax having a yeah. conversation with a child. And he being my kids, talk to him. Um, and when he is around, you can see that it, it's like they're playing with a friend, mm -hmm. as weird as that sounds. Yeah. So, and I, I do believe we bought him for the reason, like, we were drawn to him. Well, I was. I can't speak on behalf of him. Yeah. As soon as I, 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 I needed him. And as soon as I brought him into our house, it's almost like he's now, like, our guardian in a sense. Mm -hmm. Like, he watches over. He's very, he comes to me a lot. And I feel like he just watches over our children as well. Um, so it's nice. It's crazy, but nice. I'm not going to lie. In the back of my head, I... I've always thought that what if it's not a child, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I've never had anything negative with Burke. Um, but sure, that's on the back well, of your no, mind. That's he just has me. Thought that recent, well, okay. He has thought that recently too. <laughs> I truly believe it is a child. Yeah. I believe he's there. He he was meant to be with me. He's had that thought too. And our biggest thing is we don't want anything negative on our home. Yeah. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Um there was a time possibly there was a negative entity energy in our home. And the first thing he said is we need to make sure it's not the bear showing himself because you are quite attached to this bear. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but if it is, they got to go. Yep. And of course, you know, you get kind of defensive because I'm a mom. It's like my child. So, <laughs> you know, without further research, we found out that it indeed was not him, which was quite relieving for me. Well, that's good. So, <laughs> I take you got rid of the yeah. negative energy? Yes, we did. we did. Good. Can you walk us through what you had to do to get rid of it? Well, um, so we... Pre um, what? Okay, so uh -oh. to start off is there's a lot of people out there that we've spoken to who are paranormal investigators. You know, they, they, they come out and they say that you cannot get rid, like, a paranormal investigator cannot get rid of spirits or ghosts. That's it's never going to happen. My reply to that is, I beg to differ. I agree. And going forward is, we, we sat down and the team had done two podcasts um, with Hidden in the Shadows, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Megan and Isaac, very nice people. And we built a relationship where... I asked them that 
uh, with what they do and what we do, maybe there's a connection where we can help them uh, with their abilities. Uh, so being said, so uh, Megan has uh, got psychic abilities, very powerful, very strong. Isaac himself um, can uh, cipher energy through his hands. Um, but being said, uh, he can withdraw negative energy, and what he does is he traps them in a replica ring. So it got to the point where, like Christy said, is our like it got to the point where our house felt very dark. Mm -hmm. You know, the visitors that would usually come by and visit would no longer visit. Um, angry, my kids yeah, were the, angry. the kids took a turn. Like, you know, my son was just very dark, <laughs> even though he's into the Halloween and all that kind of stuff, and he enjoys what we does and he understands. It's his persona was, you know, he wanted to draw clowns. He wanted to draw these People images that... People getting hurt and um, injured. Oh, it was wow. very weird. That was like instant, right? He was going from drawing houses to blood on paper. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. That's so, disturbing. You know, being said, it's it very disturbing. It got me really worried. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it got to a point where Christy and I were out for a drive one night. And we had Burke and we were stopped and actually having coffee and we were, you know, talking about our house and our feelings and what needs to change with, with what, what we do. Mm -hmm. And I, and I told her straight up, I said, I, I'm going to reach out to Isaac and Megan because I feel that there's something more that we're missing. Well, the night before we actually went for that drive, I had a dream and I heard a extremely scary voice. And I can, it was referring to Burke and it was like, get back here, you little something or another. Um, but it was almost like a demonic. It was just the weirdest voice. Like when you watch horror movies, possession movies, that voice. Oh, yeah. And I, uh, and I was like, what the heck was that? And right away I started freaking out. I told him about it. And that's initially why we went for the drive to discuss our home and, what the heck's going on in there? Yep. That was probably um, so, a very smart idea, not discussing it in the home, just going away from it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's our thing as a team is, uh, you know, when we when we built this team and we sat down, there obviously has to be a set of rules to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, you know, there's, there's absolutely no drugs, no alcohol. Yep. And no matter where we go, whether it's a location, someone's house, or just looking at a cemetery. The first thing that ever takes the first priority is our safety. Mm -hmm. So it got to the point where I felt that I could no longer protect my home, that we needed to reach out to get a second opinion. And that's what we did. Um, so, you know, moving forward, I did reach out. Uh, they were able to contact me in about a half an hour's time. And I went on to a live call <clears throat> where, uh, I took Isaac on, on a tour of my home and Christy was by, by my side. And uh, within our phone call, he was able to cipher uh, three, demon uh, three demonic um, spirits in our home. Uh, one of them uh, being in the corner next to my son while he was sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, the second was down in the living room, which I felt the most energy was taking place. It was very dark. And the third one is what he described to be almost lizard-like, where it was crawling on our ceiling, um, where what he had to do was he had to reach out to his wife, Megan, and actually have her use her ability to enter our home to trap this entity in one location for him to cipher. Mm -hmm. um, but I tell you, you know, a lot of people may listen to this and think it's a joke or a lie, but being in the moment and witnessing what happened, and feeling that relief within minutes was was mind blowing to me. And just the change in the atmosphere in our home. Yeah. It, the air completely. just feels lighter. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> That's the thing, right? It's like all of a sudden, though, it's your visitors are wanting to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took a little bit, but you're getting that regular. Uh, the regulars are coming back to say hi. You know, you, my kids, your mom and dad angry, are coming right? by, right? And the kids, they want to play. They want to have fun. They want to ask questions about Burke. 
they're getting more and more back to what it was before. Um, you know, so being said, Isaac and Megan, if you are listening to this podcast, we appreciate it <laughs> from the bottom of my heart, guys. I appreciate it. That's and awesome. I've learned to be more cautious in going into locations as well and making sure we really use protective yeah. um, because of that. Because as it says, as he says, that I may have brought it with me, it may have started to be attached to me from. A location we went to <laughs> and it happens to be uh, quite ironically it happens to be what we believe that same location that we believe burke traveled to without physically being there um we didn't have a bear that day the oh, story i told you earlier yeah yeah uh, uh we believe it was from that location that whatever entity it was uh followed her home isn't that so interesting that's interesting yeah yeah been a crazy year <laughs> <laughs> so can you walk us through uh, uh, an investigation do you uh, use crystals or sage or prayers anything for protection before or after well being said um we've always kind of brought an offering uh especially when we enter s- the cemeteries mm-hmm. um so being you know i know it sounds bad but myself being a smoker I've always made sure to have at least one cigarette and offer the spirit to join me for, you know, one more cigarette. Yep. Uh, in my eyes, that's a way of offering, the t- you know, that well, kind of feeling. As well as they do um, say for cemeteries, uh, tobacco yep. yeah. is a good. So. Uh, Christy it. got yeah. really good. At, uh, um, I can't remember where it came from or who passed it on to her to try. I, I believe it was Jane, a really good friend of ours. Uh, who's into the crystals and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And she said, try this. And what it was, it was a prayer that she sent Christy, and we would light an incense, and all together we would stand in a small circle, repeat these lines until the incense burned out, mm-hmm. and we would we would go into our investigation. Now, we kind of leaned away from it just because of weather and whatnot, like we just got hit with a dump of snow. Yeah. But... We like kind of feeling out the locations. So if it is a cemetery that we haven't been to, or even if we have, I don't like showing up and just setting up at the first thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll take you know an hour or so, and we'll walk the grounds. We'll we'll get a we'll get a feel of of what's going on. Yep. And we also do carry. We each have our own stone as well. That's right. Yeah. I've had some jewels made for us from Andrea. From Andrea. Oh, actually, nice. Which, so that's a new thing we carry with us as yeah. well. So. Are there any yeah, particular so. any particular stones that you are um, drawn to? Not necessarily drawn to, I wouldn't say. Um, they each have their own, you know, sources. Yep. So um, we all, especially from first starting, carry a ter- tourmaline. Black tourmaline. Uh, yep. Yeah, so we each have one of those that we carry on us. Um, that was probably our major thing. I do believe it's really good to have. Mm-hmm. Us. So that's a major one. Uh, I know it's going to sound stupid, but um, for me, when or for, for us, when we, we go somewhere, um, as silly as it's going to sound when we're saying goodbye, um, regardless of what location we're at, we we always out loud say, you know, thank you for your time, but you're not welcome to follow us home. Yep. Sometimes even words in saying that, at least we believe that it might help, um, you know. Which at that one location, that, that thing, we didn't say any of that. We packed up our crap and left because uh. things that were coming through when we were like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> Yeah, so. We one. do the same thing. Yeah, um, we'll say that whatever is there that you're not allowed to follow any of the team, um, because if you do, well, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> so you know, um, yeah. Hmm. Is there any particular place that you prefer investigating than others? I think we each have our own favorite spot. To be quite honest, <laughs> do you have your own? I have um. my own. So. <laughs> Uh, for me, I really, I mean, Irving House was really cool, but I, I think personally, I really, um, I'm very drawn to Riverview. And um, recently, um, I went out to uh, the U.S. Cedra Woolley, if I'm saying that correct, and I really uh, quite enjoyed um, North State. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, for me, Riverview was probably the most I'm drawn to and the most, uh, like, the spot I quite enjoy uh, going to uh, the most. You're always going to capture something there, though. Wow. It's just crazy. And people that don't even believe or skeptics have even said to us that they have seen things, whether walking through the windows or what it may be. And this is a shut down the same asylum. So there would be no reason for someone to be walking in that building. So yeah. Unless they're an investigator. No one's allowed. It's meant for the movie crews now, obviously. Oh. And other than that, because they are decaying, it is also a, a safety, safety risk. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Um, personally, I, I think... My favorite location, I think, would be the BC Pen. Um, and the reason for that is you get a little bit of everything from people who's in prison just for, you know, the typical killing. Mm -hmm. uh, or you got a little bit of bank robbers. Or you got people that are in there that was for pet, petty th uh, crime. Yeah. Um, but I'm more on the historic side where... The deeper it gets in history, I find myself more intrigued. I'm the same. Um, so, right? So with the BC pen, uh, for instance, uh, there's a little bit of the Billy Miner thrown in there. There's a little bit of, like I said, train robbery, bank robbers, uh, just typical people getting killed. Um, so every time we go there to investigate, you can almost hop around location or headstone to headstone and get a little bit of information from everybody. Mm -hmm. Um and then when you go down to the original, the castle, uh, which we were able to do, we were down in the, in the holding cells there. Um, we were getting information that tied us back to certain people that we were speaking to in the cemetery, uh, so, which was cool. So, and this yeah. was before we fully researched. That's um, right. Yeah. Anybody. So having names pop up. And so we go back and research it more because we knew a bit about the history of it. Yeah. But not names and who did what. So to go back and listen to that and then go research, it's like, oh, wow, that adds up. Yeah. 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 I like going into a location blind, not knowing a lot of information, and then doing the research after. That's right. I, I prefer that yeah. as well. I yeah. like knowing a little bit because you need to know a little bit yeah. to be asked these questions. But, um, you know, and then researching it after from your evidence, it's just a wow moment when something comes up. You got a spirit pole going up right now. Oh. <laughs> really? Uh, I'm going to turn it around. Yeah, I left a spirit ball going on just uh, over there on the mantle. <laughs> you can't see it now. It was just yeah, going off. Just That's going awesome. Off. Yeah. Because I get asked sometimes, do you ever have uh, EVPs coming through when you're doing interviews or any paranormal uh, things happen? And not a whole lot. I do get some listeners say, I think I picked up something. Uh, I had a guest one time tell me he listened to it afterwards and said, oh, my God, at this you know moment, yeah, there was a voice there. Sure enough, there was. But I didn't pick it up during the interview. Um, so things happen because I, I hear a lot about other podcasters who say oh yeah I have paranormal shit happen all the time when I'm interviewing and I'm like I don't get that and it's not an it's it. not an invitation <laughs> <laughs> we've been on a couple where we've gotten feedback that oh listen to this we've captured yeah. an EVP behind your voices and we're like huh? cool we're <laughs> followed <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh, I'm, I, I just think it's cool so I'm going to show you yeah. But my favorite place, I like this one Pacific cemetery. So, so yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, I just have to show you. So this is a break from Riverview, from West Lawn. Uh huh. Um, you being me, I wanted to bring it home. So I'm very <laughs> proud of this. That's I really like awesome. This. Uh, I, I know it's 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 kind of silly, but no, um, not at all. It, I've done I've done that in the past. <laughs> We normally have little things. Him over here wants to take a whole break. <laughs> <laughs> I um, uh, I'm originally from New Brunswick, from the Moncton area, and in my home area there, there's Rebecca's grave. Uh, every community seems to have a local haunt that all the teenagers want to go and drink and try and find the ghost. Well, this was the, uh, a spot for us. So as a teenager, we used to go there a lot, and um, 
At one point, Rebecca and her mother's grave, the, the stones were just shattered. Uh, it was vandals. I took a piece home. I didn't tell my friends. Oh, so we're in the car and I'm <laughs> saying, yeah, look what I got. And they're all like, what are you doing? So <laughs> after about, I don't know how much time passed, maybe a week. And I told my mom because she, my mom's very, very religious and um, French Roman Catholic, you know. Um, so I told her, I told, but she believes, you know, paranormal stuff. So I said, Mom, I, I took a piece of Rebecca's grave and I'm freaking out and I got to go bring it back. <laughs> so, yeah, my friend, my, I told my friends like, yeah, we're going to go bring it back. OK, good. Nothing ever happened. But I was just freak. I was a teenager. I didn't know. You know, I just. Yeah. So I, I can relate to the brick. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. See, one day, one day, is that, that building is so old. And they've, they've already torn pieces of um, Riverview down. It's just so unsafe. Um, you, you know, one day I will have the the last remaining piece. Yeah, you have of, a piece uh, of history. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, where's your favorite place? <laughs> um, I like the BC Penn Cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think my all-time favorite as of now this moment would be visiting Janet's grave. Mm. Um, I feel like just the, uh, I guess the history on her, what she, what was accused that was done or said to be, it's just, you can always get information. We went down to her house. Well, her old house, I guess we were able to snap some photos, which look a lot like her, which ties into it. I'm, I just want to keep investigating her yeah. specifically. And there's so many answers we can still get and can have. It, and can you tell us a little bit about Janet? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, like, so Janet was a, a she was a nursemaid uh, that came here from Scotland, mm -hmm. um, and she worked for the McRae family as a babysitter. Uh, as a babysitter. Um, long story short is, um, during her time here, uh, she was a little bit of a, of a play girl, uh, being said, um, these are reports that has been said right. that she was, it hasn't been confirmed. Okay. Uh, being said, uh, based on her murder at the time, um, they found her dead, uh, in the house that we visited in the basement with a gunshot wound to her temple. Oh, geez. Uh, at the time, the, the police that was to show up uh, picked up the murder weapon, which was a gun, without wearing gloves. So instantly, that, that deletes it as being evidence. Contaminated the evidence. Uh, the story, that's right. Um, the, other, the other side of that story <laughs> is that her being a playgirl, uh, she went down to Highcroft Manor at the time, where people used to get together and actually participate in party and uh, orgies. Uh, this was her lifestyle back then, um, where people believe that she was raped and murdered. Um, on the other hand of that, um, a lot of people believe that during the investigation of her body at the home, if it was suicide and she shot herself, there was no blood, there was no brain matter on the wall of where she was. It didn't match up to how you would shoot yourself that's right yeah sounds. it would be um, messy so, yeah. exactly yeah so at the time in, in you know 1922 area um the Ku the Ku Klux Klan at the time were trying to make a chapter here in Vancouver um which actually still stands today and that's Vancouver Children's Hospital uh, Children Place mm -hmm. uh for the kids um they believe that they were involved in uh, her murder. Mm -hmm. And there's but so nothing. many other locations tied with her as well, though. Yeah. You know, there's the police museum. There's the yeah, Canuck place. The Vancouver Police, uh, the Vancouver Police Museum actually um, did the autopsy and had her in the freezer in the morgue at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Highcroft Manor, where she hung out. Um, where was Canuck, the, place. Canuck Place is where the Ku Klux Klan wanted to to form a chapter, the police shut it down. Um, so what we did is, with this investigation and her story, we've almost become the replacement team as the police. <laughs> you know, um, 
so when we went to Janet's house in Vancouver, uh, it was Christy and I at the time. We were sitting in our car admiring the front of the house. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, on first sight, the house looked like it was it was almost too good to be true. Like, yes, the lawn was overgrown, but there was no cars. There was no sign of life. It was just a home. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's been sitting there for years. Yeah. And um, so sitting there looking out our window with our eyes, we witnessed a green orb um, standing or sitting at the front of the, the, the porch. That's or floating. there. floating. Um, so Christy goes like, wow, look at that. You know, take the camera out and snap a few photos, right? So we, we begin to do that. And I, I take out the camera. And obviously, we're using our cell phone. Mm -hmm. So you pop up the camera app, and it gives you the screen, that, what you're looking at, and click to take a picture. Well, that's all I've done is open up the app and point it out the car window. And we've witnessed this orb start walking down towards us. And at that moment, we start taking photos. And uh, we live by a rule on our team where if you're going to take a photo, uh, we take three or four or consecutive one. in the same position. Don't move, just take them. Yep. Um, so long story short, um, you know, looking into the evidence, short like once we took the photos and I drove away, I drove maybe a block and pulled over and we were siphoning through the photos. Mm -hmm. And not only did we capture the orb, we captured a full manifestation, manifestation of That's amazing. A um, so what Christy did is uh, she reached out to Andrea from Unearthing Shadows. Mm -hmm. And she asked her if she had any other ways of editing or putting these photos through an editing software where we could determine if it's true or false. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andrea got back to us and she was able to help and, and she did. Uh, so not only did she confirm that uh, what we captured, she truly believes is 100% authentic. We took it to the next level. So she got to fiddle around with the, those photos that we provided her. Mm -hmm. Christy, uh, so what happened is Janet, before she passed away, she took a self, someone took a portrait, a photo of her. She was then murdered and never got to see this final photo. We have that final photo. Wow. So what is we took that photo and we were able to reverse the way she was facing. Mm -hmm. And we sent that photo to Andrea to see if she can make a match on, is this the same person? Because mm -hmm. she believed it was. Yeah. Just by the features, I said, this is her 100%. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you're so invested, your mind might believe something different. And, yeah. and they visited the house, uh, might we add, after our our first initial trip. first uh, trip to the cemetery where we, we set up and tried to talk to her and we were getting a lot of responses. Yeah. Who, who else would, would go to a cemetery and visit this? Who, who else has, has even stopped by the grave and, and said hello? Like, like yeah. how are you? You know, like, yeah. like maybe that had a huge part into it. Um, we've somehow opened the door to uh, a line of communication with her to the point where every time we, we, we go back, it seems like we're getting answers with our equipment. But she's intrigued to talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. She probably went for so long, no one, no one visiting her, and all of a sudden, hey, there people know that I'm here, and they're trying to communicate. So they're probably as excited yeah. as you are. Yeah, well, probably. Yeah. yeah. So I'll send you that photo if yes, you'd like please. to look at that. Yeah. Um, and what we've also done is, you know, I'll I'll, uh, I'll open up the door for you as well. Is if you are finding yourself intrigued into her story. Um, if you feel like reading up on her or maybe trying to give us a helping hand towards her case, yeah. this is something that we've built. We've actually tried to build our own case. And we've invited um, uh, many investigators or psychics to put their input in, you know. Mm -hmm. If something comes up, let us know and, you know, we'll pop on a live and we go visit her and tell people, is there anything you want to know? You know, are you picking up anything? Yeah, I'm it's intrigued. Like I, want, I want to know more about her. Yeah, it's really cool. Like when we went to go investigate Janet and, and learn more about her at her 
at our grave site. Mm-hmm. Um, we were getting activity, and I felt like, you know what, let's try a live. So we went on to Instagram, we popped on a live, and we just continued to investigate. Mm-hmm. Now, her headstone, uh, her plaque almost looks like a police badge, the old school little oh, yep. ears and a drop down. And it says her name, and her name says Janet K. Smith. So the K in her name stands for Kennedy. And we went into this knowing that. Um, so during the live, uh, with, with we had some people watching, and we had our spirit box set up on her headstone. Um, I asked her, hey, Janet, you know, I got some friends listening, and they're, they're wanting to know what the K means in your name. And through the spirit box, it said Kennedy, uh, female voice. Kennedy, Mm -hmm. as soon as that happened, that same female voice replied to the full name. So if you can imagine just the name Kennedy as a woman, and then we reacted like, wow, thank you so much. And then like almost a whispered voice that said, Janet Kennedy Smith, right after. You must have been giddy. Oh, it was amazing. We even went back to Days ago, we brought her some flowers um, and we tried to talk to her. We got a little bit this time. I mean, it's pouring rain. It's hard to hear anyways. Yeah. But we asked, uh, can you confirm who we are speaking to? And again, we got Janet Smith. We haven't reviewed so. the, the video yet. Um, uh, so this is, of course, as, as you know, sometimes you don't even pick up anything until you're watching video later. Yeah, yeah but every sure, moment, that's yeah. what we heard. So. And sometimes you have to look at the footage several times before you actually oh, pick yeah. up on something. Yeah. It's not just one time and then you're done. Yeah. No, exactly. We, we've all agreed that, you know, we're like, yeah, we're, we're talking about Janet. But we've been, we feel like we're just so into it. Her story. We feel that she still wants to be hurt. Mm-hmm. And well, there's a missing piece of that puzzle that's that right. is still unsolved. Right. And. Mm-hmm. You know, not saying we're going to solve a murder mystery, but, you know, even as a live body, you know, you want to tell someone your story, something that happened to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe even after you're gone, if people are making up a bunch of rumors, you're going to want to clarify that as well. And it doesn't matter. Never dead. So and I feel like you have to excuse me. I feel like that opens the door as well. Right. She you know, we've asked. How were you killed? Because I, well, me and Mike and I believe Phil believes she was killed. I don't think it was suicide. I think we've all agreed on that. Mm-hmm. She replied, shot. My head hurts. Which goes with the story of being shot in the head. Mm-hmm. So just getting those answers into just proving for our own peace of mind that it wasn't a suicide, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, whoever killed her is probably dead now. Yeah. But at least she has that peace that she's been heard. Yep. It's like that with uh, Rebecca's grave. I uh, was fortunate enough to meet uh, a descendant of hers from the Moncton area, not in person, but uh, on Facebook. And I had her as a guest and I wanted to, because the the story was that she was a witch uh, back in the 18, 1800s, 1600s. I can never remember. Anyways, um, a long time ago and uh Mm -hmm. she was deemed a witch and that's why she was she was killed and she wasn't she was um a psychic medium but back then you're branded a witch witch. yep exactly um so i wanted to make sure that rebecca's true story came out by speaking with her descendant so she was able to tell us a little bit of family history and all that and it was very intriguing and exciting for me because it's where i grew up and you know i've been there so yeah, I find it's very important, like what you're doing, is to try and find out as much information as you can and get the truth out there and get her story out there. It's Maybe they'll be at peace, right? Maybe yeah. they'll be able to enter that light and not be roaming here. Maybe they don't want to be trapped here. They just want their story to be told, really, right? Yeah. And that's what they're waiting for, and then they could be at peace. Yeah, maybe, maybe she was dormant the whole time until we decided to go there. You know, mm-hmm. like, I don't, we don't know. We don't know. This is why we do it. We don't have all the answers. <laughs> you know, what I always thought, though, is, you know, being an investigator, obviously, whether, whether you're, you're investigating a location or a person 
uh, you know, cemetery. So with us, with Janet or anybody else that wants to pop in and help us along, mm-hmm. it's completely open, completely fine. But the expression of the Vancouver police is what I want to see, see when a team of investigators <laughs> walk in and say, we got your murderer from 1922. Yeah. <laughs> we have proof. <laughs> see, how, Wouldn't that be amazing? Maybe there's some like files or something, police files, like actual Special stuff we could, yeah, you have to, we'd have to get our hands on that. But I think it would be interesting. Like, you know, I, I've always been very faithful on the fact that I believe in, like with us, uh, with the unknown paranormal, we, we strictly believe that we're trying to bring back the para unity that we feel that has it's taken off. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we're trying to bring that back, you know, one team at a time or as how it comes. Mm-hmm. Um, being said, you know, the paranormal isn't just about looking for ghosts or who's going to capture the best piece of evidence. Or this is my location. I'm That's right. It. Yes. To me, the paranormal is about the people. Mm-hmm. So whether you're looking for ghosts or you're helping uh, you know, someone with, with a personal home call. I wonder, you know, I've always wondered if, what if we took it a step further? What if you introduced yourself to, uh, you know, your local police department? That mm-hmm. doesn't take anything to stop and talk to a, a police officer because, you know, who knows? Maybe 70% of the calls that they get, maybe they can't even explain what they've walked into. And it doesn't mean we're all going to walk around with a badge and can't consider <laughs> ourselves, you know, policemen or policewomen. <laughs> um, but it, it does bring back that whole tie to helping the people. Um, so it's definitely something I, I think which would be cool for everybody to dig into. Um, yeah. You know, how are you going to help your community doing what you do? Um I'd also I'd I'd also like to add that a majority of the investigators that we've met anyway, um, they seem to be on on the no offense to anybody, but the older side. Mm-hmm. Um not that we're that young anymore, but I mean we're in our early thirties. I'm in my twenties. Oh, no. She's in her twenties, but but you know, the the more people like it's become socially acceptable almost. Yeah. Like this is a thing now, you know. If we can get our generation and the younger generation into it, I mean maybe one day there there could be if they're not if there isn't already, you know, courses in school, something, right? There definitely um, is. There probably is now, but um you know, it's 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 huge. With it's that huge. though, I do find because we again, no offense to anybody, but we are a younger group, we're not taken as serious, if that makes sense, right? Because yeah, there's does. people else that have been doing it 50, 60 years, and here we are doing it three, four years, mm-hmm. and they're like, well, who are these kids, you know? So it's almost like trying to prove yourself without being egotistic, right? Because we enjoy talking to other people. We like, you know, if we find something, evidence. And we want to make sure it's 100% what we're seeing. We will send it to one of our other friends and say, hey, do you mind looking at this photo? Do you see what I see? I've done that, yeah. Yeah, not everybody is open to that, right? And Mm -hmm. I think being an investigator, it's like a business in a sense. You know, we should be able to send you a photo and be like, hey, do you mind looking at this? Or you send me a photo and have that fam going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I to me it doesn't matter if you've been doing it for a year or if you've been doing it for 50 years. Everybody started out the same way. So why not support each other? You know, the younger teams like yours um maybe can get some more can get some input from a more seasoned team and find out, you know, uh, am I on the right track or uh yeah. you you're going to have fresh ideas that an, a seasoned team might not even have thought of. So it's brainstorming, you know, share it. Well, exactly, right? The younger yeah. generation does have different ways to do things and opinions than an older generation would, but it yeah. doesn't mean you're not compatible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And with that, with all that being said, without giving away too much, um, at least um, us, we're looking into um, different ways um, for this year, which is really exciting on 
how to get more involved within the community. Yeah. So I don't want to give away too much on that, but yeah. we're very excited um, for what the, the year has for sure. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, being uh, Having the community know about you, I find is very helpful because they might be a little bit more open to contacting you if they're if they are having an issue, you know, maybe it's nothing, maybe they just didn't take their medication or whatever, you know, <laughs> but uh, we never judge, we just, you know, you take it, you take the information, you go and investigate, and you have to ask the, the, the difficult questions, the uncomfortable questions, you know, um, do you have uh, mental issues, are you on medication, you know, it's not easy to ask those questions to a client, but you have to find out, you know, is there anything in your house, for example, that could harm us? You know, we don't know. We're going into your yeah. house, so we need to know. <laughs> that gives somebody a peace of mind, then then great, you know, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, you know, we'll go from there, right? We go from there. Um, but yeah, like you said, those questions are definitely uh They're important. hard, but you, you need to do it, right? And you have to have the cojones to do it as well right like yeah. you can't sit back like well you know it's just the house you know you gotta like you said give them a little push yeah are exactly. you crazy or not? yeah <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't word it that way but <laughs> of course but not, yeah, but. yeah um do you find that some people, some clients treat you like their own personal TV show? Because we have had so, uh, in one case in particular, we walked in there and the client was there, had their friends there with beer and say, oh yeah, we watch all the ghost shows, you know? And it's just like, you can't be here. Like you need, no. Well, can we watch the windows? No, because you're going to contaminate evidence. So then we have to put curtains or like garbage bags or whatever on the windows to make sure that we don't see somebody peering in and we might think it's a ghost. You know, do you do, do you get We're treated like, yeah, do you get treated like that sometimes? We haven't, we haven't got uh, to that point yet. Okay. Uh -huh. It'll probably okay. happen. <laughs> or doing our own little cemeteries. I can see where that plays a part, right? Yeah. People come up to you and be like, oh, oh that's cool, you know. I've watched Ghost Adventures. See, it, it starts with a conversation. Do you, yep. you know what I mean? We we all have hoodies, and um, we have a merch store as well. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> awesome. Um, but we, we have So, you know, someone sees us walking into a store, walking down the road. With, uh, <laughs> Mike's over there like, Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, you know, people get intrigued. They see, they see Paranormal Investigator, and, and you know, it's... It, it's always interesting you, you just having a conversation with a random person intrigued and they have a story for you. Um, People will always yeah, have a story exactly. though. I know, right. even the right. skeptics, even the skeptics, like I don't believe in this crap, you know, but there was this one time, it's like, yeah. and you're, you're just waiting for it when they say, I don't believe in that shit and you're just waiting for it. It's like three, <laughs> two, like, one, yeah. there it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the funny moments we had is, um, <laughs> We didn't have nothing planned. We were just hanging out as family, and we were in those moods where, you know, if we find a place, we're going to stop, we're going to investigate. Yep. So I was downtown Vancouver, and with all the stories that are out there online, we stopped in at the the Fairmont Vancouver. Mm -hmm. uh, lady in red apparition that's being, you know, seen in this hotel. Mm -hmm. So we, we paid for parking, and we grabbed our stuff, and... We walked into the hotel like we own the place. <laughs> you, know, people were looking at, you know, sweaters are being worn, paranormal investigator across the back and people waving at us. And I tell you, they left us alone for like three hours. We went all the way to the 14th floor, down to the basement. I was opening up rooms that I didn't even know where I was anymore. And and we were doing our thing, right? As and, they were watching us on camera. Yeah, so we <laughs> came back funny. up to the room. Yeah, we, we, we hopped in the elevator, came back up to the main floor, and we're heading out to go back to the car, and we got stopped by the hotel manager, and she goes, you know, I'm the biggest skeptic you'll ever meet, and I was having a blast watching you guys on camera. <laughs> she goes, the, the cool part, and what she really appreciated was we did not disrespect the hotel. Yep. So even though that they let us do our thing they let us gallivant they let us venture into these secret holes of the hotel mm -hmm. they were able to watch us and watch how professional we still took it mm -hmm. um uh 
to this day, you know, we, we get reached out and she goes, you know, I want to see that picture again. Can you send me that picture? I lost that picture. Uh, you know, we didn't capture anything crazy. Mm-hmm. There was a few things that were unexplainable where we had our digital EMF meters out and we were kind of chasing this, this ball of energy around this one lobby. I think it was on the eighth floor. Um, you know, your orbs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, um, it, it was really weird for me because when we went, the hotel was celebrating, I think it was 50 years or 80 years. And they had this big portrait of this lady in a red dress and all these stories of this lady lined up behind um, this woman. Mm. Uh, and then when I started digging into the information on, you know, what are your personal experiences? You've been here 40 years. You should have some sort of story to tell. And she goes, I don't think anybody here has a story to tell about this woman in red. Um, So, you know, being said, and I'm not trying to knock the hotel, I'm just trying to claim that maybe the stories that everybody goes online to read about, Mm -hmm. I think it's almost as a tourist thing, you know, read this cool story, come spend the night. Mm -hmm. Um, But definitely it was in the moment, it was very cool. It was fun. Yeah, in the moment. You know, people want to take photos. Um, you know, we're getting recognized when we go out to Riverview, stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's you're, you're kind of, you're being noticed, and it's a whole different way of life almost. It's, I don't know if I wanted this attention, but at the same time, yeah, it's cool. Come give me a hug, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. But it, it's fun. Yeah, it's nice more people are open to, you know, uh 30 years ago, you walk around with a paranormal sweater. People are going to think you just escaped from the insane side. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. And, you, you know, we might make fun of the, all those paranormal TV shows, you know, but it's thanks to them that it's made the paranormal a little bit more normal, you know. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well, before we sign off, do you have a piece of equipment in particular that you are more fond of than others and why? You go. Ooh. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> is it the brick? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> brick, yeah. no, 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 they're not a brick. So we, we have um, a REM pod, which mm-hmm. is cool and everything. You know, we have our, our K2 meters <laughs> and whatnot. But personally, I don't know, Mike's over there like Jesus Christ, Phil. But personally, my favorite is a spirit box. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why. That's my personal favorite. And I'll tell you why. It's. You obviously know what the spirit box yeah. is, but it's in the moment when when you're actually having an intelligent conversation with something and you can play back the video later and piece together everything. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just really fascinating. And he gets um, excited when he hears a voice come through that matches what we're saying. He's like, I heard that. Did it say that? And it's great. No, and, and it's really cool. To, <laughs> I do, to, to too. Watch, yeah. Watch the videos later and piece it together. I mean, if I say, you know, if one of us says, um, how many people do you see? And it says, I don't know, the sky is orange. That's a bunch of bull crap. Yeah, you know? exactly. But when we're asking things and it's literally answering us, to me, it's just so fascinating and intriguing. And um, I, I love it personally. I love the uh, S-Box the, the most. Nice. Um, <laughs> I for me, I it's not really that's not a I like using my phone. I like videoing. I think looking at that, seeing if you can capture anything mm-hmm. is pretty cool, right? Replaying it and you're like, it's a shadow. Now you gotta go back and be like, who was where? You exactly. Know, did yeah. you make that? I love that aspect. But I've been really into not just using equipment, but using my own senses. And I feel like that's I knew you're gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you knew, <laughs> but it is like just learning it and saying walking into a cemetery, for instance, and walking around and just getting that feel. You can feel where there is an energy and where there isn't. Yep. You know, and that goes hand in hand with then pulling out the spirit. Yeah, box. and, and I'd, I'd I'd like to like to also <laughs> add like I don't have any kind of gift or anything like that, but like sometimes I can feel something mm-hmm. um, as well. But I think with with what Christy has, I think it's especially at the BC Penn Cemetery, I think it may have saved our ass a couple of times, um, just in the sense of, um, 
you know, there's some really dark energy out there. And um, when it starts affecting you in the sense of maybe you're not wanting to, but you're almost arguing with a darker spirit and you're, you're, you're feeding off of that energy and you're basically just standing there arguing with nothing. Um, maybe in that particular moment, there's not a good, um, you know, it's just not a good atmosphere. And with, with, with her being able to pick up on different kinds of things, maybe it's a good thing because that helps us in the sense of, They're not you know, doing. we're, 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 well, we're, we're not safe. Now is the time to pack it up. It's yep. affecting us in different ways. She might be feeling something, maybe being taught, you know, I'm getting angry. He's having his effects. It's time, it's time to pack time it to up. Time to go, yeah. It's, it's who we are. When it, it starts affecting us in an environment, in how we investigate, then that's not good. Um, I think we each bring something different to the team that makes us strong. And, um, it's great. I really love uh, doing this, and um, I talk a lot. I apologize. Uh, Mike was going to tell you his favorite That's piece okay. of equipment. Sometimes Before I can ramble. I'm sorry. Before we get to Mike, I want to say I'm also sensitive, and I get a lot of people saying that how I don't believe that you can sense things like that. How can you sense energy? And I'm, and my go-to is always: Have you ever been next to an electric fence? And they're like, Yeah. Mm. I said, well, The closer you get to it, the more intense you feel that energy. Right? They're like, Yeah. That then they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And see, that was the hardest part with actually trying to do this is who's going to believe you, right? Yeah. Like, I kind of kept it quiet. I would tell Mike or Phil if I was feeling something. But then there's times you keep it just quiet because you're like, are they going to think that you're just losing your mind now? Like, maybe you need to take a step back because you're acting completely crazy. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to open up and actually use it and figure it out now. With the support of my family. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what's your favorite piece of equipment? Um, I'll be honest. I'm a little bit, I find myself a little bit old school. Mm -hmm. um, you give me a K2 meter and an audio recorder, I'll go out there and find you some evidence. Mm -hmm. um, but the one piece of equipment is, um, if anybody's aware of Mike Del Coro uh, mm -hmm. from More Party Paranormal, um, he's he built or uh, he does build and he in, invented uh, what's called Delco goggles. And what that is is the uh, sight deprivation <laughs> experiment. Uh, Which, if you haven't tried it, I really suggest you try it <laughs> because it is a whole new level of investment. So, hmm. with, with the luck that we've had, is uh, I was fortunate enough to win a pair of these goggles oh. through a contest. Nice, uh, would make which makes us the first team in Canada to own these goggles and they they bring a whole different game um <laughs> uh, even though they light up red and you sit there with your eyes open and you're looking through these goggles uh so the way it works is you have one person asking questions while the rest of your team is seated uh you you plug in your spear box to your ears and you wear noise canceling headphones over top and what you're necessarily doing is you're just Blurting out words that are coming from the It's theory. like the Estes method, but a whole new level. And uh, it's a piece of equipment that not only have we had intelligent responses come through the spirit box, it gets to the point where we start seeing spirits or what we think is our eyes picking up on someone who's actually not there. Mm-hmm. It actually um, so, helps you, I find, use your senses as well. That's right. It, it blocks everything out. It puts you in the moment. It, it's just it's just you and wherever you are. Um, it, it brings a whole different game. Okay. Um, but being said, again, you know, with that, uh, that's, that's one that I really enjoy for experiment-wise. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm going to go out and capture something today, would, would most likely be, you know, pick up the K2, pick up an audio recorder, and just have your cell phone on hand. Um, I, I truly believe that if you are going to use your phone or take photos during an investigation, what, what the rule I stick to is, if I snap a photo and I think that I have something, if it takes me longer than five to ten minutes to determine what it is, it's instantly just garbage. Um, we try to bring the best evidence as we can. So 
being said, if, if we can't witness it on the first try, you're not going to witness it on the second try. It's just, it's not evidence at that point. Well, why sit there for 10 minutes and be like, is that something? Is That's it? right. Yeah. Check it. We can't determine, yeah. right? Because you have so many photos. If you did that, how much time would it take to go through all of them? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Along the video. And, yeah. <laughs> well, could you tell the listeners where they can find you? You can find us on Instagram at The Unknown Paranormal, uh, same as YouTube. Uh, you can find us also on TikTok. Um, we have a website um, as well. It's all under the Unknown Paranormal. Or the Unknown Paranormal BC. Okay. And like the listeners know, I will be adding the links to the show notes so it'll be easier to find you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate this. Again, like I said, I'm always happy when I have a fellow Cana fellow Canadians on. So thank you. <laughs> Always, and thank you very much for having us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Happy hunting and stay safe. Stay spooky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, we've made it to the end of another episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, take care of each other. And if you'd like to be on the show or have questions and comments, just drop me an email, paranormalheart13 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Paranormal Heart would like to extend a special thank you to PurplePlanet.com for supplying the music for the show. The views and opinions expressed on Paranormal Heart are those of the host and participants.